time. Do you ever wonder where all the time went? The average person spends about three hours a day on their smartphone or more. The smartphone is becoming the dominant internet portal to connect online. American teens are spending seven hours a day on their screens or more, and that number is rising. And all of us, as our previous speaker discussed, are spending more time on our screens than ever before, approximately 10 to 15 percent of the time has gone up, and that number is not going back down. That's where all our time went. If you spend just three hours a day on your screens, that's equivalent to about 10 years of your life, assuming you start as a child, live into your 80s, and spend about eight hours a day sleeping. If you spend six hours a day, that's equivalent to about 20 years of your life, and with little to show for it. And I'm sure there are very few people, in the end, that had wished they had spent more time on their screens. Technology, the knack of arranging the world so that we don't have to experience it. I love technology. I've always loved it. When I was a child, I used to drag a bunch of wires around the house after me, and I would take things apart and try to put them back together, usually unsuccessfully. And when I was about 10, I talked the telephone man into giving me 500 feet of wire, and I took that wire and I tied a rock to it, and I threw it over the power lines across two streets in my neighborhood, all to connect my friend's house to mine, so at night we could talk on a primitive intercom system. <laughs> Even then, it was about connecting without really being there. Now, I like to call myself a digital half-native, that means that I completed all of my professional training and about half my life without the internet, without smartphones, and without, well, believe it or not, computers. And it may seem like these things have been around forever, but they're all relatively new. And even the smartphone, which about 85% of us have and use, is only about 13 years old. Eighty percent. Eighty percent of the time we spend on our screens is not for work or productivity or even school. It's for entertainment or distraction or to alleviate boredom or just for fun. But it's too easy to get caught in the rabbit hole of TikTok, YouTube, video games, Instagram, Facebook, even the news, even the news and stream television is designed to be addictive and keep your eyes on screen. When it comes to screens, it's designed to keep us on. Let's face it. The internet is addictive, and the smartphone makes it even more so. And I know something about addiction. I've been practicing addiction medicine for the last 25 years, and for the last two decades, I've been studying internet and technology addiction. I published one of the first large studies looking at the addictive nature of the internet, and one of the things we found out early on is that all of us no matter who, loses track of time when they're on their screens or online. Oh, and that's me in People Magazine, hard to believe, that's me in People Magazine's 1999 idea of what an internet addict looks like. But today, in 2021, 
It's so prevalent and so common that we see it almost as normal. The internet addict today is, in fact, all of us. Are these people alone, or are they together? And why are they all on their screens? One word, dopamine. Dopamine is a pleasure chemical found in the limbic system of the brain, part of our reward system. And brain scan studies have shown that dopamine is elevated from internet use, just like it is from drugs and alcohol and other addictive behaviors. In fact, it's so addictive that we'll keep using it even if we have negative consequences. The thing about the internet is that every time you go on, you don't know what you're going to find. You don't know what you're going to get, when you're going to get it, or how good it's going to be. But when you find something good, you get a small hit of dopamine. So in essence, the internet is the world's largest slot machine, and the smartphone is the world's smallest. And the brain loves maybe. It loves that maybe you'll find something you like. And our smartphone adds the additional attraction, my glasses, attraction of notifying us that something good may be waiting for us. And when we find that something good, we get a little hit of dopamine. But the interesting thing about the notifications are that the phone becomes a portable dopamine pump because it gives us twice the hit of dopamine when we have the anticipation of the possibility of something good being there. So when we don't know that something might be there, it's even more enervating and exciting to us. No wonder we check our phones all day long. The internet is a virtual hypodermic delivering the digital drug of content into our nervous system. And the faster that content gets processed by our nervous system, the more addictive it becomes. And when you combine the internet delivery mechanism with stimulating content, you get an amplification of the potency of that content, which can make it even more addictive. Add to that the ease of access and availability of our screens today, and you can see why we have a hard time putting them down, because one of the things we know is that the more accessible our screens are, the more likely we're going to use them. And lastly, there are no boundaries online. There's no beginning, there's no middle, and there's no end. So you never know when you're done. Well, this could be any family, but if you feel badly about spending too much time on your screens, don't feel bad, because this is actually part of my family. I did get their permission to take the picture. <laughs> the idea is that any of us have equal susceptibility to become overused on our screens, or to overuse our screens. In fact, I recently had to delete TikTok from my phone, which I have right here, not once, but twice, because I was that compelled. OK, three times. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I see this? <laughs> Parents, does this look familiar? What would you do to calm this baby down? Would you pick them up and hold them? Would you sing to them? Would you walk around the room with them? Maybe you'd give them a pacifier. Oh, wait a minute. I know. 
I think I'll give them a smartphone. <laughs> that looks like a happy. Now it starts innocently enough. All they want to do is see their baby happy or to stop crying, or they see their young children look happy and satisfied when they're on their screens. So naturally, they want them to have them. What they don't realize is that screens are changing their brains and nervous system, and rewriting the neural pathways in their brain. It's hard to limit something that feels so limitless. Another thing that seems limitless are the number of studies and news stories on internet addiction and screen use that have appeared over the last 25 years, like this 2019 study done at Cincinnati Children's Hospital that looked at brain development in preschoolers. Who had heavy use on screens, and by the way, it doesn't matter what screen they're on. And they found significant reduction in white matter development, particularly dealing with language literacy and cognitive skills. So, when asking the question, "Does screen or is screen time changing our brains?" the answer is yes. And another brain change that we see. Is something called reward, reward deficiency, which is just a fancy way of saying that too much of a good thing isn't a good thing. You see, the brain experiences the internet as easily accessible dopamine, but overstimulation of dopamine can desensitize us to real time and real life pleasures, so that life can look flat and unexciting. And actually, we see this a lot with addictions. It comes from the dysregulation of the reward receptors in the brain. Social media companies know a lot about neuroscience, neurobiology, and behavioral science, and they know that they can use the basic instincts and drives of social connection and social approval to their advantage. And to keep our eyes on those screens, variable reward, social comparison, validation looping, comments and likes—they're all designed to increase the likelihood that we'll keep looking. In fact, Facebook's incredible success was partially linked to the fact that they added the like button to their platform. Because they found people would be more likely to both post and check, because of that reinforcement, that social reinforcement that they received. Oh, and if you think for a minute that social media is free, think again. It's not free. You pay for it with your eyes. Newer. Faster and more technology is not necessarily better. The idea that the media industry has sold us that a better life comes from better technology, or more freedom comes from better technology, is not actually true. In fact, there's some evidence to, to suggest that we have more limitations in our lives now because of our technology. In fact, how free did you feel the last time? You left your phone home or in the office, and you got that incredibly panicky feeling. I know I didn't feel so calm and free the last time I couldn't find my phone before a business trip. The internet is educational, useful, and just fun, but we pay for it with the one thing we can't get back and we can't get more of: our time. If you don't manage your screens, they will most certainly manage you. We need to build our screen use around our life, not our life around our screen use.
So what can we do? First, a more mindful use of our technology. It's too complicated today to not have a conscious plan on how we manage our tech. We have to have a plan on how to deal with the intrusions on our lives. We need to rediscover boredom, which can be a springboard to creativity and social connection, and self-reflection, which is a dying art. We can turn it off sometimes, for a few minutes, a few hours, or just during a meal. And we can take tech challenges, the next time we're on a line or in a waiting room, or walking our dog. We can resist the temptation to pull out our phones. And lastly, we can find and rediscover pleasures that we either once had or have never had, but that are much less likely to come into fruition when we have our screens going. We don't have to be held hostage to our screens. Let's take those wasted hours and put them back into our real calendars. I encourage you all to put down your phone, turn off your screens, and plug back into life. Thank you.